So I've been shooting on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra for the past couple of weeks. And this phone is not as straightforward as you would think when it comes to getting the best images possible out of its camera system. So that's what we'll be discussing today. I'm gonna to take you through the camera app and the camera settings in the S24 Ultra. A lot of these settings are actually applicable across Samsung's range. So certainly with the most recent generation of phones, uh, the S24 for instance, but also a lot of the older generations of phones, the S22 Ultra, the S23 and the S23 Ultra, a lot of these will be applicable. So of course a big change this year from the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the change from an optical 10x zoom to an optical 5x zoom. So we have four optical ranges, so we have that ultra wide, the main rear facing camera, the 3x telephoto and now the 5x telephoto on this camera system. You can still choose a 10x mode but that is a digital crop of the 5x 50 megapixel sensor. And in terms of maximizing quality the best camera that you can use is the main rear facing camera. That is of course the 200 megapixel sensor on this phone. Obviously it's not going to be able to be used for every single scenario and that is of course where the other zoom ranges come in useful but for the general rule of thumb if you want to get the best image quality out of this camera I would thoroughly recommend sticking to that 1x mode where possible. And without further ado let's jump into the camera settings. So to access the camera settings on the S24 Ultra or the kind of slightly more advanced camera settings what we're going to do is we can open up the camera settings app head into the settings in the top left right hand corner and then we get uh, all of our camera settings here. The first few settings available in here you're not going to need to worry about too much I would suggest that you probably leave them toggled on because they're kind of just ease of use features. I normally actually toggle off the scan documents and text because I actually do take photos of things like receipts and stuff like that with my phone. I will leave the QR code always on because that's obviously a very useful feature if you're scanning a QR code on your phone. Shot suggestions I personally leave off. I'm a professional photographer and videographer. I do this for a living so I kind of don't need these suggestions but um, I would suggest if you're a beginner and you're just getting into photography in general you might want to toggle that one on. The intelligent optimization thing is the first kind of most important settings that we're going to choose so we're going to tap into that one and you can actually see the amount of image optimization that you get. So what this is doing is this actually allowing you to choose and dictate the amount of processing that goes on after you take an image. So this is a really nice feature that Samsung is now allowing us to control this just a little bit. Even though I often and complaining about the amount of processing uh, from the Samsung lines of phones, I actually leave this on maximum because there are quite a lot of instances where you actually want Samsung's processing because the processing on a smartphone camera is actually what makes it convenient and what allows you to kind of get the most amount of good shots in almost every situation, if that makes sense. There are always going to be times where you might want to shoot a more professional photo, one with a bit more considered thought around it, and we'll discuss that later. Later. In my experience, the best way of doing that is shooting that in expert pro raw mode. And then this kind of setting and the amount of processing going on afterwards is kind of irrelevant. So you can leave this on and not have that affect those images. If you prefer a more organic look in your images, I would actually suggest that you just have a play around with these few settings. So play around with the medium settings, the minimum settings to actually get a feel for actually how much processing is going on in all of these options. And maybe you might prefer kind of the minimum output. For the same reason here, and this is in a similar kind of vein, which is obviously why it's in the same settings section here, is the scene optimizer. Samsung scene optimizer is actually very, very good. What it will do is do things like pop the colors of blue skies or make greens a little bit greener. It kind of does this using like predictive algorithms and things like that. I again leave this on on my phones because Samsung has had this feature for so long now that it's actually kind of pretty good and generally does do a job with with their hardware of making their images just a little bit more pleasing for phone screens. Again, this is gonna be a preference thing. This might be something that you turn off. I, like I said, when I'm shooting like kind of just for ease of use JPEGs on my phone, I actually kind of want Samsung to do a lot of that heavy lifting for me, which is why I leave these features on. Heading back in now, we get an option here. This is just an option to actually swipe down on the shutter button and take a burst of photos. Really good for kind of fast action shots, watermarking turn that on or off. The next most significant thing that we're going to look at is the advanced picture options and this is crucial. So we're going to head into here 
And what this allows us to do is actually turn on high efficiency image formats. Most notably, what this is going to allow us to do, and we'll discuss this later, is the ability to shoot in 200 megapixel modes and also 50 megapixel modes without killing the amount of storage on your phone. So we are absolutely going to toggle this on. The 200 megapixel modes without the high efficiency formats end up being like 40 megabytes in terms of size. So this is way worth it because it will bring that file size right down and actually allow you then to shoot in the far superior 200 megapixel mode without, like I say, murdering your phone storage. The next option is the pro mode picture format. This is in the pro mode, but not the expert pro raw mode. Um, this is just allowing you to set the kind of image formats. I leave this on RAW and JPEG. I don't actually use this mode all much because I either just shoot normal or I shoot in the Expert Pro RAW. We'll head back here. A couple of selfie camera options. We're not going to discuss those. Video options. Again, I'm not going to touch on video for now, but you guys let me know if you're interested in seeing a comparative video for uh, the best video settings on the S24 line of phones. And next we have general usability camera settings. So we have uh, tracking autofocus. I'm, I'm leaving this off just because I'm very used to the way Samsung autofocus works on their phones you can just kind of I, I just find it easier to tap where I'm going but you can turn that on if you like grid lines I would always turn on these overlay grid lines on your camera app and allow you to uh, actually work on your composition a little bit better than without them at all and there's just one last setting we're going to want to change which is in the settings to keep what this will allow you to do is actually allow those camera settings to actually persist so if you change one of your camera modes and then exit the camera app the setting that you change will uh, will toggle on most of them I'm actually going to keep off but what I'm going to turn on is the camera mode. So that will retain the same kind of mode if I actually close the app. And then the high resolution photographs because I end up shooting in those high resolution modes a lot. And it's actually kind of annoying to have to reset that every single time. Another option you have on Samsung phones, and this is actually a potential reason to consider a Samsung phone over other alternatives, such as like the Pixel line or the iPhone line, is that you can install an additional application called Camera System, which gives you more manual control over your camera app and your camera settings. You just head into the Galaxy Store download it it's called camera system it is an official samsung app and then you just head down uh, into the camera settings again and it will actually add this little tab so it will add something called camera assistant in the settings app we can tap that and you get a whole bunch of additional options there are a few interesting ones to call out here even though i do think the s24 line is, you actually kind of need this less on the s24 line than you did on previous iterations because of some of the changes that samsung have made but there are a few interesting ones so first of all is the zoom shortcuts button we can actually tap the 100x here and then if we open up the camera app we actually have the 100 button directly on the app itself this is really nice you almost feel like you get an additional optical zoom obviously this is the 100x is an entirely digital crop it's not optical but it's nice to have that as a button there we have hdr options i definitely wouldn't mess with this your phone is doing a lot of hdr work uh, all the time when you process images in terms of picture softening i do have a bit of a complaint about how much samsung sharpens their image this actually allows you to manually control that so you have the option to uh, choose a medium soft softening or a high softening. If I wasn't using and reviewing these phones, I would probably play around with maybe putting this on medium, but I kind of like to, for the bigger picture, actually try and get the most accurate picture of what this camera is like. There are a lot of additional controls inside this app. I'm not going to go over each of them individually just because it will take a bit too long, but um, the most notable ones are the quick tap shutter. It's actually going to allow you to take a few more photos than you would normally be able to take. And I do have a bit of a problem with shutter lag on Samsung phones, so this is uh, uh, and almost like a reason to download Camera Assistant in the first place. And then the next one would be it prioritized focus over speed. Now, I know these are slightly contradictory, but this would basically, if you toggle that on, toggle the first one off, it should essentially ensure that you are getting uh, a good frame each and every time that shutter button is taken and you won't get tons of slightly more blurry images like you might get uh, if you didn't have that applied. With that out of the way, let's head into the camera app. So the default camera app on the S24 Ultra is actually extremely powerful. You get a whole host of controls, both kind of manual controls and uh, and anything a bit more. So this is the kind of standard JPEG mode. This is what I spend the most amount of time in. But then you can also switch over to Pro mode, which lets you control full manual controls over your camera settings. And then also Expert Pro Raw mode, which we'll touch on just in a little bit. The most important things I want to draw your attention to are, of course, the resolution settings up here. So we're going to tap and hold on the resolution or excuse me I'm just going to tap it direct and you can see that we get three options here we get 12 megapixel mode 
50 megapixel mode and this is going to allow us to shoot only in the 1x lens and the 5x telephoto lens and then we can change that over to 200 megapixel mode and this is only going to allow you to shoot in 1x mode but this is the mode that you're going to get the most amount of detail in your images whilst also retaining a slightly softer characteristic something that is more indicative of a more expensive camera system where possible shooting with the high efficiency image format that we talked about earlier in the 200 megapixel mode will give you the best possible image quality out of this camera outside of expert pro raw so really there's not a whole lot more to mention here outside of the camera settings of course we have normal controls like flash timer and aspect ratio that and with some filters options if we turn on the normal 12 megapixel mode you can control your filters that you have available here at the bottom here for some reason oh they're, that's they're not appearing because i've my camera is face down but that is the well, that is where you go to control that type of thing that is what i would do is if i'm shooting jpegs and then we can go over to this more section and choose expert pro raw and what this will allow you to do is to shoot 12 megapixel 24 megapixel and 50 megapixel raw files pairing the beautiful hardware of the s24 ultra with the ability to shoot and edit raw photos where possible you're going to want to stay in the 50 megapixel range if you are spending the time of shooting a raw photo and then editing it later on i would always recommend that you shoot in 50 megapixel mode so that you get the ability to maximize the amount of data in your shot in terms of image editing i actually go with lightroom mobile on my phone this is because i already pay for the adobe suite so i use uh, adobe lightroom to edit on my mobile and it's really really good it's a really powerful editing system so we are here in adobe lightroom and we're going to go ahead and just run through the editing of one of these photos so you can actually see the type of editing that I do on an image like this so let's go ahead and first of all we will uh, I'm actually going to crop this just to allow us a little bit more real estate so you can actually see a little bit more of the image but let's just go I wouldn't actually normally crop like this but let's just hit that tick there just so we get a little bit more real estate of the image on the screen first of all is the color I'm going to do a temperature adjustment and I want this to be a much kind of sunnier image even though it was sunny but the, I'm just going to warm that image right up next we can go to light and the exposure actually looks pretty decent you'll see that in in most images taken with modern smartphones is that it, it, the, they generally do nail exposure it's actually the HDR elements that actually require normally a bit of adjusting I'm going to really bump the contrast here because I want there to be quite a lot more contrast you can see just by tapping on the images here how much of a difference that already is. That's the original. I don't know about you, but I much prefer a much warmer tone to that. I'm gonna bring the highlights right down so we get rid of this clipping in the right-hand corner of the image. I'm gonna go over to detail, really decrease the amount of sharpening in that image. And then I'm going to also enable lens corrections, uh, even though it might not have a Samsung compatible profile, but that's fine. I'm gonna go back to the light section here, pull up the light section, scroll down on these. So I've, I've already adjusted those highlights. I'm gonna bring up the shadows slightly, as you can see, but then I will pull down the blacks just a little bit, just to again, add that kind of measure of contrast to the image there. So you can see a final image in terms of an edit we go from something that looks a little bit like this to something that looks a little bit like this. Hopefully that gives you an idea for how to maximize the amazing camera hardware that you have in your hand with one of the Galaxy S24 Ultra line. One of my favorite things about this phone is it does allow you a massive amount of potential in terms of what you can achieve as a photographer with a smartphone. And using the camera settings that we've discussed, you can actually maximize to get the best images possible. If you wanna shoot simply in standard JPEGs, you can do that just by opening the camera app. You can also shoot in really high resolution JPEGs with far less processing applied we can do that or we can go the whole hog and shoot in pro raw and really tweak and edit those photos so you are getting a full spectrum of what you might actually have to normally pay a significant amount more to get a more capable camera hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful if you've got to this point in the video I would thoroughly appreciate a like it just makes a big difference here on the channel so thank you for the support and I'll catch you guys next time